Hi guys and welcome back to Nodflow. So this is the third video of the Copernicus series and today we'll see together how to create a full material from scratch. So I really think you'll find this information useful and without further ado, let's open Udini and let's start. So in Houdini, I'm already in a copnet and I will start my graph by creating a tile pattern. It's one of the most common ways of starting a material. I will then add a random mono. I will plug my ID to my seed. And now if I visualize it, I have a random variation. Also, I'm thinking this one in terms of height right now. So I think it's very stream. So let me do a remap just after the random mono. And I will change the minimum to 0.77. I will then introduce a new node and that's the feather. The feather, if you're used to Substance Designer, is basically the bevel node. So I can just connect my tiles into my source. And as you can see, I will have sort of like a bevel effect. To make sure that the feather is not uniform and that is stronger in some tiles and less strong in other ones, I can now connect this one as a mask. Lastly, I will just add a small blur and I will leave it as default. And it will be almost invisible what it does, but when you work with height, it's always a nice idea to add a little bit of blur. Nice. I hope this one was clear because now we're going to do something a little bit more advanced. So I will create a UV map by ID, put it here. We need the IDs. At this note, we'll create a UV map on every single ID. Now I will create a UV transform because I would like to rotate them randomly. And you see in the moment that I try to rotate, all of them rotate in the same direction. I can connect my seed to my original seed over here. In that way, it will be randomized for each one of them. I will just organize this better so it's easy to understand what's going on. And then as we saw in the last lesson, UVs in Copernicus go from minus one to one. So let me create a remap and we are going from minus one to one to a new range of zero to one. Lastly, I will need to convert my UVs into a mono. So UV to mono. And I can now merge the blur and the mono with a single minimum operation. I will connect my blur and my UV to mono. And I have something like that. Now, although it's very strong, I can simply reduce the minimum to something like 0.3, I guess. And as you can see, we have some parts that are supposed to go a little bit down and some parts are supposed to go a little bit up and that will give us a nice variation. We just need to add some distortion to make it look a little bit more organic. So I will create a distort by slope. I will put it here and I will connect my blend into my source. If I visualize it, it will give me an error because I need to add a fractal noise. You see, once I connect it, that should work, although it's very strong. If you don't understand what's going on when you see something like that, please make sure to check my previous video because I really explain in depth how this node works and what is a derivative. And I think it's very useful just to get an idea of what you are doing right here. Then I will manipulate my fractal noise. I want to change the amplitude to something like 0.007, so it's not that strong. Reduce the roughness to 0.34. And lastly, my element size to 0. 0.015. Now you see if I go into the distort node, I can change the scale. It's just distorting the slopes. So if you don't exaggerate, that will give you a very nice result. And you also notice that if I click on streak, I think I personally like the result a little bit more. Now I will consider my height completed. So I will just reorganize the graph a little bit. I will enclose all of this in a network box. I will give it a darker color. And then I will create a sticky node. I will move it over here and I will call it height. I will hide the background, drag and drop a color on top of it, and then set the text size to extra large. Now, of course, it's huge. Let me just change the scale and move it over here. So in this way, we can easily understand what's going on here. Let me just simply create a node for organization's sake, and this node will be called out height. So let's continue. I will now create a simple constant. I will make constant to be a color. So over here, I will change it to RGB. And for now, I will choose my color to be just this simple cyan. I will then multiply it with my height. And that's the result I have. Now, of course, it's a little bit boring. So let's introduce some extra variation. I will create another random mono. I will put it down here and I will connect it to the first tile pattern ID. Now, I basically have the same result of this one. But the reason I'm using another one is that I can simply change the seed now I have a completely different result. Also here, I will introduce a remap. And before remapping it, I would like to see the result so I can just add another multiply. I will duplicate this one. I will connect my multiply and then I will connect my remap. It's already way more interesting, but definitely too dark as I was expecting it. So with the remap, I can change this one. And if I don't like the placement of the dark tiles, I can just go back to the random mono and change the seed however I want. So maybe something like that looks a little bit better. And regarding the minimum, I think like just, it's just a thing. Let's add a little bit more details. So I will add a height to ambient occlusion. As the name says, this node needs our height. So let me connect it back to my out height. And let's see the result. It's not that great. So usually what I tend to do is increase the height scale. So something like a very high value. So maybe something like that. And then reducing the view radius. Now you see we're already gaining like lots of small details. And I can simply 
multiplier this one on top of what we already have so background foreground and let's see the result yeah we definitely have way more variation than before you see like without and with so without exaggerating it's now time to add more color variations so let's add in hsv i will connect it to my multiplier and by default as we know it will change the value or the saturation or the hue of all of them in this case i want to change it randomly so that's why i will be using another one of these random monos just duplicating it one time changing the c to something random as a remap i want something stronger like 0.25 and i can fit this one into my hsv mask i'll move it a little bit forward to make it a little bit more organized and now over here if i visualize this node i can set the shift to something like 70 and if the mask is too strong i can definitely reduce this one so i have a very procedural way of controlling my color variation so for now 0.7 i think it's fine now to see what's going on i will create a preview material i will connect my color into my base color and i will connect my height from here out height i will not visualize the result and it will be a very strong result so first of all i would like to preview this one not on a grid but on a sphere so let me go here and change it to sphere then into normal send displays i can definitely reduce the height scale to something like that and now we can definitely add way more variation so first of all i will add more divisions so my height will look better so something like 200 or even 300 if necessary let me add a null to confirm that my color is finished so i'll put this one here name it bc for base color and i will just give a color to this one and height so i can see them better when i go to change stuff around it's now time to create a roughness map for that i will just create a fractal noise i will visualize it i will change the center to 0.034 the contrast to minus 0.33 the element size to 0.19 and the roughness to 0.18 i would then like to put this pattern randomly on every single tile in order to do that i can use a new sample I can put this one into my texture and connect it to my UV transform over here. And now if you check the result, you will see I have basically repeating the same one, changing the rotation on every single tile. That's nice. I can now add a remap. And considering that I want my tiles to be quite shiny, I will just try to reduce the maximum values to something lower. So maybe something like something like that then i can plug this one into my roughness and i can take a look to the results i guess it's working but it's still a little bit too shiny so let's take a look to the remap and let's fix it so maybe just increasing the output minimum until i have something that looks fine yeah i guess maybe something like that it's way better it's now time for the normals so again i will just add a null over here and that will be called rough and that will then create a height to normal i will connect my height i will put this node over here and i will connect this one into my normals of course they are very strong so i can go back to the preview material and just reduce the scale over here so just adding a thin should be very delicate so i guess something like that allows me to have a way in more interesting result okay so i just added another hsv this time without a mask and i've increased the value scale to 1.6 in this way, I think it would be a little bit brighter and a little bit more interesting. So right now, I will consider my material as completed. And the next time, we'll see how to expose the most important parameters and make this material completely controllable from one single node. So I really hope you enjoyed this lesson. I really hope you learned something new. If that's the case, please consider subscribing. Leaving a like and commenting means a lot. And also by commenting, you make me know what kind of content I should do next. Thank you for staying with me. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.